Today I'm going over some memories of the very first time I played a laser tag type game. Here in Houston in the mid-1980s, this place called Star Laser Force opened up when I was a junior in high school. I don't recall my mom or some friends had heard about it, so we all decided to go check it out one night. And a pretty neat little setup. They had this waiting room where you could read this science facts and stuff like that about this little thing about how fast the galaxy was traveling. By the time you finished reading this, your galaxy is traveling, you know, X thousands of miles. Like, hey, cool. I got to help move the galaxy quite a bit there. And, you know, had a video game or two. They had Centipede back then. Then when it gets to be your turn or your team's turn, you'd go into this room and you'd suit up, have this gun connected to a chest piece and a, a helmet on. The attendant would be standing there and they'd have this wireless headset where they talk to the other attendant in the other waiting room where they're about to release the other team because I think there's one team that they would release first into the game then there'd be this sound effect that'd start up and these lights would flash I, I guess if you used your imagination yeah really imagine you're being transported to some futuristic play field where you run around shoot each other then you're released into this dark maze and a whole lot to see for the most part except for the telltale lights of the enemy the teams were either in green or red lights which you could see glowing in the dark and so you shoot at them see those telltale lights flash and you got a hit and your your power would be knocked out for several seconds. You couldn't shoot back or anything like that. So that usually give it time for the guy who shot you to escape or time for you to escape. And they'd run off and attack someone else usually. The place had some ramps and there was like a jail section. I mean, it's not the kind where you can throw people in there, uh, throw on the noobs or anything like that. I mean, you just had these bars in a couple of places. And there was this one place where it had this really huge display of that, that glowed. I mean, it just it showed Saturn there. It's like 20 feet wide or something. It looked like, you know, you're in a ship and just looking in outer space, looking at Saturn. It's really cool. And there's a couple of places off to the sides of that Saturn display where people could, you know, just fortify and, and gather around and shoot down at you. So if you go by there and you see the telltale lights of the enemy there, you know, don't bother going in there. You know, you're going to get shot. Real simple, flat scoring system. Each time you got hit, your score went up by 10 points. There's this little display on your on your chest piece. And I usually did pretty well. Usually, only, My score is only like 110, 120 for the most part of all the games. You know, I got hit about 10 times during a game, which is, that's actually pretty decent because there are times where I had friends got over 300 points. And I remember one guy was saying, he got like 360. I mean, he'd been hit 36 times. He said, I kept on getting hit from behind. I said, ah. And then one day I had a game go that bad. I think I had over like 300, and I think also my suit was malfunctioning because occasionally you get a bad suit and where you could shoot, and it wasn't shielded right or, or something, and it would score against you. And I had that happen several times, and there was also times where you know, I just shot someone, and then I, I heard the inside my helmet is the sound effects that you had when you got shot. You'd have sound effects when you shoot, and then when you get hit, and I'd turn, I'd see the telltale signs of, you know, enemy lights ducking down. I was like, oh, I kind of slink off. And there's also one holding spot where I saw a friend of mine there once. He was crashed down. I mean, he's like a dead end. And he was crashed down. He was shooting at the enemy. I was going, dude, you're awesome. He said, get out of here, get out. You know, because he just didn't want to attract too much attention and get shot himself. Or he probably wanted to hog it for himself. Probably one or both of those. I never did find that place again. Huh. And also your guns had this charge going where if you shot too often, your range would decrease. And I had this one time where two friends of mine, they, they saw each other and they kept on popping up there and shooting each other. And one register hit and, and one of my friends was going, you know, sitting and going, come on, recharge, recharge. And, you know, it's like it's one thing to, to sit back and say, oh, well, I would have just kept on popping up and having my friend shoot at me until my gun charged up and then shot once and hit him and into that. But it's like, yeah, sure. Don't be a backseat star laser force player. Psh, you know, it's one thing to say later what you would have done rather than when the, you're actually in the game, the adrenaline's flowing. Yeah, sure. And at least once, we didn't have an even number of players when we went. So the guys there, they just let us out. And, you know, there weren't any teams. Just any, anyone you saw, you just shot. And uh, 
And one time they did something different. I mean, they had this, you know, this spacey music playing, and they're like, hey, how about we just play a song instead? And so they played Don Henley's Driving With Your Eyes Closed, and, and right when we got out and started into the game, one of my friends said, this doesn't seem the same, because <laughs> it wasn't, and it seemed to end quicker, too, I guess because we had this blasted song rather than the space ambient music playing, because it, I think the matches were like seven minutes long. Then Photon opened up like a year later, and I'd read about this in a magazine. I said, holy crap, look at this. You know, it was talking about how it was all carpeted and much fancier setup. Since it was a chain, it was a, here in the States and I think in Canada, too. So that came along, and a friend of mine was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is better than Star Laser Force, blah, blah. And so I only went there, played two games, and the setup was different, and the scoring system was different. You got however many points you got for shooting people, and plus there was a base. It was like on this really tall... I don't know, it was Paul or something. That was like 200 points if you shot that. And I didn't really think it was better than Star Laser Force. Obviously, they had a lot more money to put behind it because it was a chain. But it was just brighter, and I like the darkness of Star Laser Force better. And I don't really think there are places to hide out and stuff like that. I mean, you don't want to spend a whole game doing that. There's usually a term for that called lamers. And it just... I don't know, I just didn't really like it that much. And then that one closed down too, and then of course they came out with the home version of, of the laser tag, and then they went out of business. And there's been several places that come and gone. You know, there's one in Memorial City Mall here in Houston that also shut down. And they're usually located in malls, and you know, a lot of kids' birthday parties end up there and all. Anyway, flash forwarding years later, when you're on the internet and you you know, do searches for stuff, and then, you know, one day I thought, hey, you know, I should look up Star Laser Force, see if there's anything on there, and one of the very few things I found out about it was from this guy named Alan Huffman, he had just a small mention on his website about it, and I wrote to him, I thought, well, I'm probably not going to hear anything back, I mean, the copyright date on his website is like 2001, I forgot when this was exactly, this was several years later, now I got several replies back that night, and he still had his card and t-shirt his ID card and T-shirt from the place. And first I was going, what? You still have that stuff? And I was like, huh, now I wish I'd kept my stuff too. I think I only kept it for like a year or two after I went out of business and I tossed my card. It's like, well, it's gone, you know, goodbye. No point in keeping this. <laughs> and then what's bringing all this about doing this presentation here, my nephew just went to a, a local laser tag place last week and, you know, and he's talking about, you know, a lot of the stuff sounds familiar and not much of it has changed. And uh, brought back these memories and I did another internet search. There's still not much going on. And I was surprised to find out. I found a chain of, of uh, posts back from 2004. This lady had put up about saying her husband had pretty much invented Star Laser Force. It's debatable whether Star Laser Force or Photon was the very first laser tag type place ever in the world. And that was here in Houston. I'm going, wow, I didn't I didn't know that. And you know, with there still hardly being anything online at all about this place, you know, it's it's kinda of sad and I don't want to go into oblivion, so that's why I'm doing this. If anyone finds, you know, the old there's a local newscast about it or a radio commercial that played, you know, you know, if someone could put it up that would be great. I mean, there's other you know, laser tag video is up. You, know, you just want to comment and say, hey, you know, I was never in Houston much, so let's play in that game. You know, that's fine. Just share whatever stories you have. I just didn't want this to pass off into oblivion. And I also told about how Lady's husband had a, the World of Wonder toy company had given her husband a pretty nice sum of money. That might have been the reason why, one of the reasons why Star Laser Force shut down. I uh, can't remember exactly. I, have, I mean, I'll have a link to the post off in the description. They basically said, hey, take the money, or we're going to come out with this home version of it anyway, and then you could try and litigate it back, which he wouldn't have the money to do, and then they went out of business like a year later anyway, because they figured it was a fad and wasn't going to last much longer than a year. So I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Payback. So anyway, I just thought I'd share those memories, try to keep the memory of this place alive, and you know, support your local laser tag, you know, paint gun place, a little bit different. Have your aim be straight, Try not to get hit too many times, and thanks for checking this out.